Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za what what's up? up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Good morning, South Africa. Good morning, geeks, and good morning to the rest of everybody. What my name is are. Diani. Uh, my name is Misha. Welcome to the Geeks Connect show. Uh, yeah, it's going to be another uh, bumper uh, crazy show. Uh, we've got a very crazy human being coming through. I uh, hope you guys are ready for it. Yes, um, Rama, this is the show that connects you to the industry leaders, to innovation platforms, um, structures, tools, to fellow gigs, to the users of your applications, and all things ICT, um, entrepreneurship. Um, we talk all things um, social media on the last um, Thursday of, uh, of the month. So today's focus is on social media. Do connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, wherever. Just do what you gotta do. Yeah, yeah. Connect with us. Uh, don't forget to include the hashtag Geeks Connect. And uh, we'll be checking out your comments, reading everything that you guys put up. And, uh, you know, any questions that you have for us, uh, do ask a geek. And then uh, we'll, we'll definitely fill you guys in on that. Okay, so what's happening in the tech space? What's happening? Okay, so last night it was revealed that, um, well, it happened. It happened, guys. It happened. Um, the Department of Basic Education... Um, website was hacked, dude. What the heck? Yeah. Um. So basically, some group uh, that w- that it did it, and any idea why it was hacked? Ah, oh, the crazy human being has landed. Oh my goodness! He just look at that. Yes. <laughs> uh, um. So, so the Department of, of Basic Education website was hacked. Was still a bit shocked. Um. The the the, the department says that um nothing was compromised in terms of the data, but um yeah. It was hacked. So it goes to show that we do have a crisis and we need to, 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 to make sure that we, we increase the efforts in, in addressing the, the cy- cyber security skills and information security in I, this I, case. I saw you put up a, a tweet about uh, one of the responding, uh, someone responding to, to, to information about the hacking of the website. What do you think about that particular tweet? What tweet? Um, there was a tweet where someone was responding, and he said that you must they must put the right people to answer questions, uh, with regards to that. Oh yes. Um. So uh, w- with that tweet, uh, um, basically s- s- someone said that um, uh, 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 no information wa- wa- was compromised. Uh, people, d- the hackers, do not have access to um to to to. to to, to sensitive data, but um, the, the department said that um, the website is only there and providing information that is intended for for public knowledge. But um, well, I, I still think that they must um, in in cases like this, they must get someone who understand um, cyber security, information security, and then uh, appropriately respond to, to to such questions. Yeah, so hopefully they will learn and learn really fast uh, because it's 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 bad. But hopefully everything is fine and the website will, will be back on and then everybody will be connected. All right. Yeah, Mesh, and where have you been turning up, eh? All right, so uh, last week I, I rocked up at, at the Facebook event uh, last weekend, I think. Uh, it's called the Facebook uh, Entrepreneurship... Facebook Young entrepreneurship day uh youth entrepreneurship day basically it was a day uh for with facebook uh where they basically had a bunch of young young guys who wanted to learn about uh, that's a nice package who wanted to learn about what's going on in, in with facebook what can you do with facebook so it was just like a mini conference uh, done by facebook uh it was pretty interesting i mean you learn a lot of things about facebook where it's going the number of users it has the different platforms it had uh, so there will be a couple of things that we'll be doing with Facebook going forward. Yeah, it can make that official. There will be a couple of things we'll be doing with Facebook. Uh, so it will be great to see how we connect with Facebook. So for all the geeks, uh, not just the geeks as well, but the, all the, the, you know, the marketing guys, the business guys, entrepreneurship guys, uh, look forward to some stuff coming up soon. Yes, and we'll also be telling you about a Facebook bot that was um, developed here in South Africa. Yes. Um, so th- that's an, an exciting story to, to, to look into. And it was developed by one of the top 15 young geeks. Remember, we featured top 15 young geeks in the country and we're still running that series in um, highlighting some of the work that they have done. So we'll tell you about the last um, seven today and also the innovation that, that they've been um, working on. But in studio, we have... We have Mr. York, the coffee drinker, in the studio. Uh, let's see if we can actually plug it and you guys can get to see 
him a little bit. Uh, this is our coffee drinker right there. Like it's it's just gonna be madness the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we 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 we're looking forward to 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 a show with him. A uh, very good friend of ours, uh, but very very. Uh, knows a lot of things about the industry, especially from an entrepreneurial background. Uh, failed a lot uh, in terms of business, uh, but hopefully now everything is coming all right. So we'll know, find out more about York later on. Yes, and of course also turned up at the Reimagining the Future of Water Hackathon on, on Tuesday in yeah. Johannesburg. So, so, so that was an, an interesting one. Tell us a little bit about that, uh, about the, the hackathon. Yes, so the Water Research Commission... Um, with the Department of Science and Technology and the ICRD group. Okay, I'm just getting distracted <laughs> by what Mr. York is doing. I'm, I'm going to put up the picture that's disturbing T, so yes. you guys will get to see. Yes, but, but, but the hackathon it, it took place um, in Johannesburg, um, and, and it, it brought together young developers, innovators, de designers, data scientists to come and solve um, water challenges that we have. But then, um, how do you now reimagine the future of water? And it was quite an, an, an exciting um, hackathon to see IoT systems being developed, guys making use of data, building platforms that will make sure that um, water security is um it's there. Yeah, so, so it was nice seeing that hackathon. I mean, it was very, very, it was intimate, if I can use that word, uh, very uh, parts of the day. And um, looking forward to seeing some of the, the, the stuff, you know, always the case, seeing the stuff go, go live. Uh, hopefully in, in future that, you know, some of those products will actually go, go live. Yeah. Um, now, M Mr. York, w welcome to the show. Hey, awesome to be here. Yeah, can you quickly tell us um, about yourself uh, to, to the listeners out there? Uh, hey, everyone. My name is York. I'm from Switzerland, been in South Africa eight years, and this is the most coolest country in the world, and I've seen a few. All right. Do you want much more? Yeah, oh, sure. Let's get, let's get everybody bored. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, shit, my hair is out of place. For those on the radio, I'm bald. <laughs> um, so I'm, uh, I used to be in corporate, worked around the world uh, for nine companies in 11 countries, got fired five times. Two times I quit just before they could fire me. And, uh, two, and uh, two times I made enough money for me to become an entrepreneur. Moved to South Africa in 2007 when the world's attention was turning towards the continent. Uh, and because I come from big corporate, I know, of course, everything. Came here and promptly fucked up. Am I allowed to say fucked up? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay, I didn't say it. Um, children, beep. cover your ears. Uh, it, promptly, was a, it, was a, it was a delayed beep. Exactly, and promptly beeped up a number of companies uh, for many, many reasons. We can talk about it later. And some of them grew into something very big, and some of them were fantastic learning lessons. So I'm passionate about entrepreneurship, and I'm absolutely uh, in love with youth entrepreneurship. Awesome. Okay, speaking of youth, you know, uh, one of the events that I attended the, the past week is something called the Tane Leadership um, uh, uh, Talk. It was hosted at the city of Tane, Tunisia, and it brought together young leaders. Um, there was a speaker from the EFF. There was a speaker from the Department of Basic Education um, addressing the state of education in, 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 our, in our country. Uh, um, so so it, it, it's quite fascinating to, to see that young people are getting involved in, in issues of leadership. But what do you think of the youth entrepreneurship scene in South Africa, though? Describe the youth entrepreneurship. In, what do you mean by that? Um, so, so, so I'm talking about um, um, young entrepreneurs, aspiring entrepreneurs, um, the, the, the ecosystem in which we, we are now starting to see young people as innovators, yeah. as um, social activists in addressing the, the challenges. What has been your observation in Africa? particular so uh, let's narrow it down to south africa okay uh, to me south africa is like a double espresso inside a red bull <laughs> uh, it's unbelievable <laughs> the energy out there it's yeah. absolutely awesome the the passion the hunger to want to make something um, i think there's a bit of a mismatch sometimes in terms of ambition and okay. in terms of ability to do something. So you get an unbelievable uh, swell wave of incredible young people who want to change the world. And sometimes in this, uh, in this instant gratification society, I wish everybody would just pull the handbrake just a little bit. I mean, don't go on a standstill, 
but say, listen, if you want to build an unbelievable business that's going to make a huge impact on this incredible continent, do it step by step. Don't rush to try and be a one billion rand company overnight. Start with a small thing. Start doing something really well, small, build it up, make a profit, grow to the next level, and so forth, rather than become overly ambition, overly ambitious, rather. Okay, so so um, now um, who also highlighted some of the top 15 young geeks in the country who are doing some incredible Ooh. work. Yeah. Um, so 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 these are what we describe as geeksters, the next big things in a way. <laughs> yeah. So, so we'll just be go going through the list. Um, so, so we selected a variety from um, game developers, game entrepreneurs yeah. to say. Um, the the techies the designers uh, and and all so, so, so sort of um of profession within the ICT ecosystem yeah. but most importantly to assess the health of, of the tech ecosystem uh, but um what do you think of tech entrepreneurship though you, you know I joke when I travel around the world so we are a platform that is in 57 countries and and so I meet a heck of a lot of people around the world and when they see when when they have spent some times interacting with African entrepreneurs they realize that actually Africa is a capital innovation. Mm. Africa is, a, is actually the cradle of humankind. If you look at the history of Africa, it's mind-boggling how, how many technologies existed in Africa before they existed anywhere else in the world. I mean, I don't mean to now sound non-techy, but you know the first menstrual calculator was actually created in Africa 40,000 years ago, oh, which is a yeah. stick, which wow. is a mathematical stick, really. Yeah. Um, that's slightly non techy <laughs> uh, but so there's an incredible amount of innovation and the reason for that is frankly if you can get a business model especially a tech business model to work here in the conditions that we have where people don't have access to data where infrastructure is volatile mm -hmm. where skill sets and the money isn't flowing if you can get it to work here it can work anywhere in the world what, what do you think are some of the challenges that uh, you, you've seen the ecosystem. Yeah. You've seen it from an entrepreneurship, general entrepreneurship point of view. You've seen it from a uh, techie point of view. What do you think our young people are lacking? Uh, what is that thing that you that's become common that you think are lacking? Minus the lack of resources and sure, whatnot. Sure, yeah. sure. What do you think we, we really are lacking? Well, I think you are actually in an even better position to comment that, especially on the tech side. But my experience or my observations are not so much the ideas that they develop, mm but the business problem that they solve. That's not to say that every technology should solve a business problem. Yeah. But sometimes you kind of want to, you need to solve a business problem in order to make that business sustainable. If it's not sustainable, you're kind of, it's going to be a wonderful hobby of yours. And so I wish more young entrepreneurs would spend as much time as they do on developing the solution yeah. as they do on developing the business behind the solution. Okay. Yes. Um, so w the first um, top young gig we're providing today is one Mr. Singwabile Sigenu. Michel, can you tell us about him? Yeah. So just a quick one about Singwabile. Uh, he's part of the EWB uh, UP. So he's a 21-year-old final year uh, mechanical engineer student from Bloom. Uh, he's a project coordinator for Engineers Without Borders, that's UWB, wow. um, at, at UP. He's also a mentor for UP students doing their community engagement projects through the phenomenal GCP module. Mm. He's been involved in community engagement since his schooling years and has grown into a driver of community engagement, mostly and especially in, in the township of Mamilodi, Pretoria. So this is one guy who is, is, is very good. I mean, he came to a hackathon last year. Uh, so one of the things that's worth re recognizing is that he's very interested, is very keen on helping young people, uh, you know, sharing the knowledge that he has. Uh, you know, he's, he's not stingy with the resources that he has as well. Yes. So, so one of the projects that they worked on was um, a show that was generating electricity as you walk. Yeah. And you could use that, that energy to charge your phone from, from where, wherever you are. And that, that's quite interesting, uh, considering that today we're, speaking, we're talking about social media. So imagine yeah. you need to capture that cool photo somewhere. Mm. Um, the, your battery is flat, you can just um, get energy mm. from your shoe. And I, I, I mean, listen... Ideas, there's a million and a half out there. Mm. So I think, first of all, congrats for him for starting the journey of entrepreneurship. When we started our business, we didn't even know what our business model was. We were trying to solve a problem. Mm. And as we started the journey with little baby steps, the business model evolved into what it is today. So for you also, start your business 
start it get yeah. the word out you know there might just be a crazy bunch of people out there yeah that want that technology in their shoes uh, I don't know. It's, that's a reality. Mm. I none of us have a crystal ball. None <laughs> of us uh, expected some of the technologies that out there. Like what the hell is Snapchat about? Exactly. Y you know, and yet it's become one of the most popular platforms. And their business model doesn't exist yet. Uh, their business model will come one day, and it'll take us all by surprise. Hopefully, they don't become a, a, a Twitter. Uh, where the business model takes forever to come through. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, so our next. Um, Profiling person is a very young lady, very interesting lady. I met her um, some time back before we really got involved with gay culture stuff uh, at a Google event. Mm. Uh, Mukhadi, Mukhadi Rasekhala. I'm sorry if I pronounced it wrong. Uh, she's a fashion designer and also deals with luxury craft, but that's just part of what she does on the side. Uh, she's actually a very intense geek. Uh, she codes really, really well, and she loves her code. She builds her own stuff. So after completing her honors in computer science at VET, attending a fashion pop-up event gala, had tech side in newfound passion in e-commerce, specifically in the fashion space. So she describes herself as a tech entrepreneur with a soft spot, soft spot for fashion. Uh, one of the businesses that she's running is the luxury craft.com, so you can check it out on luxurycraft.com. So she's basically mixing her passion uh, with what she's learned from a techie point of view, uh, which is now being able to code so she can build her own stuff and you go into the e-commerce platform. Um, and, and fashion is, is what she really focuses on. Mm. Yes, um, so, so she is one of the young people who are trying to to disrupt the e-commerce system in, in South Africa. Um, we'll, we'll actually have one the show very soon as well to yeah. talk about the health of e-commerce in, in South Africa. But um, well, it's, she's one of my favorite young ladies in South Africa. Mm. Yeah. And it, it sounds like the way you described her, that she has found the kind of sweet spot between what she's passionate about and what she's talented in. Yeah. Yes. And that's, that is actually rare. How many of us are actually stuck in jobs we don't like uh, to pay the bills at the end of the month mm. while secretly harboring an interest or a hobby somewhere? So, Mohadi, well done to you. Fantastic. And I hope you, you become an incredible enabler for many young or not so young fashion entrepreneurs out there that need to bridge the divide between the classical fashion business and the new digital economy. All right. Yeah. So the next one is, is uh, Regina Khatle. Uh, she's an MD and founder of Educate. So if you, if you, if you, you see her, you think uh, she's probably just one of those artistic human beings. Uh, but she does a couple of things in the gaming space from an educational point of view. Um, I think she was also featured in one of uh, Vodacom videos. Oh, yes. Uh, with yes. Related to some uh, of the stuff that yeah, she's the, doing. The, the next level video. Yeah. Uh, um, the, the campaign that Vodacom has been running. So um, Regina Khatle is one of the, those people. But um, can you tell us more about it? So cle she's cleverly disguising educational content in arcade-style games. Regina Cutler is blurring the boundaries between learning and playing. Her company, Educate, Arcade, uh, uh, as in gaming arcades, uh, offers a selection of games that are suitable for the national curriculum, and each game is housed in an educational arcade machine made from e-wasted and other recycled materials. So that's the nice thing about it. Mm. So she's not only create, uh, bringing fun into education, but she's also using the recycled material, uh, you know, to, to, to build some of the stuff that they're using. So these are kind of like board games or are uh, you talking technology? Uh, it's, it's arcade games. Uh, how do I describe arcade games? So when we were kids, we used to go to, to these um, gaming... Yeah. Uh, um, we have them everywhere in the world. Yeah, yeah. These rooms where you play Pac-Man and all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That type of stuff where you put a card in and whatnot. So she's using that kind of element and creating an educational element. So uh, taking a curriculum and putting it into something like that. So you play a game learning what you'd learn in class or something like that, but using nice. some sort of a game. Um, so Educate emphasizes the positive role of teaching through technological platforms and the importance of playing as a learning incentive. So basically you play to get some sort of incentive. Over time, Cutler hopes her arcade games will not only address gaps in the educational system, but also instill a love of learning in the children who play them. So yeah, there's a couple of things that she's that she's doing, and I mean, um, she also does a bit of we can learn and watch uh, stuff. We think, what is it? Is it VR? Uh, yeah, the, the, the VR, VR thing. Classes. Yeah. So she also uh, does that as well. I got so sick by doing that thing. <laughs> <laughs> it just throws your balance completely off. Listen, Regina, that is absolutely fantastic. 
But please don't forget that there is a much more profitable and bigger sector out there. You probably started this with a good heart, but uh, don't just go for the educational system. Go for corporates. Go for in- incubators. Go mm. for reorganizations that want to teach skills. All of us adults, and I'm sort of, in, I'm still a teenager, but of course um, you are. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks. Um, but all of us, actually, at the end of the day, are kids that want to play. Mm. And if you have cracked or are in the process of cracking that space, which takes uh, learnings and, may, and gamifies it, you are sitting on a gold mine. Don't underestimate the corporate sector, and those clients might even be able to cross subsidize the educational yeah. element. Yes. So, so you got that, I got Regina. Regina. Yes, it was actually featured as one of the uh, Melon Guardian two, top 200 in the, in the country. She's mm. She's been doing a lot of work here in the country, in the US, and, and, and so forth. And she, she's one of, of the few young ladies who are good in the augmented reality sector. Mm. Yeah, so th- th- that's exciting as well. We also with her at the Faku yeah, yeah, yeah. festival last year. Unbelievable. Uh, yes, so, so they, also, they gave her her own... Um, uh, um, show stand and then she was showcasing her work and, and so forth. So it's really exciting to see young ladies being involved in in disrupting uh, t- such industries. Uh, let me turn the question to you guys. You've seen a lot of tech uh, companies. What has what's the difference between these entrepreneurs that you're featuring and those that don't make it? What makes these stand out? Well, from what I've picked up, it's people jump in and think uh, tomorrow I'm going to make a million bucks. Uh, they don't understand or they're not aware of the journey. And if they see the journey, they tend to give up uh, mm. because the journey is not as easy as it comes. I mean, you can build something, but then there's a couple of things that you learn in the journey, like selling. You have to sell your products. You have to get potential investors. You have to get your work out there. So most people just really, especially from a tech point of view, it's just I'm going to build it and then they're going to come. Mm. And then I'm going to build it and then hopefully the, someone's going to see this stuff and then push it out. So they don't really go the extra step. Uh, they focus on the technical element of putting it together, but they don't really have the skills of pushing it out there. Those are some of the hurdles that I've seen a lot of these guys uh, come across. Yeah, Of course. Uh, what, what about time to market? Yeah, time to market as well. Uh, taking forever working on a project. Yes. Um, so, so, so what, what, what we have seen is um, people want to wait and have like the perfect, perfect, perfect product. Um, and... and, and um, to, to tend not to get um, the customer feedback in time. Uh, you might yeah. find that by, yep. the, by the time you want to launch a product years later, um, the, the market is no longer there or maybe big organizations have, have closed that market for you because remember, you, you have to, to have a market share and then um, you, n- you need to make sure that um, you identify your piece, your niche uh, well in time and, and make sure that you, you disrupt uh, at the right time. Spot on. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah, so we, we see a lot. So I like the one that you just put now. We're seeing a lot of that uh, where these guys are just taking forever and waiting for the most perfect product to come out. And then next thing you hear that the very same thing is already out with someone out there. Yes, um, there's an app called Go Metro. Yeah. I, I, I like Go Metro. When Go Metro was launched, it had, I think, one of the most horrible designs. Mm. Yeah, but the, um, they, they decided that we, we have to, to launch this. Yeah. We can't wait for to be, to be having the best design in the world. Let's launch this, get it out to, 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 to the uh, to the public. And now Go Metro is quite big. Um, it, when you go to the Metro Rail in Cape Town, you, uh, Go Metro is, um, is an app to use yeah. in, in knowing about trains, schedules, buses, and so forth. Yeah. And you, you, you're so spot on. And that's, it goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. Go out there, be an embarrassment, uh, get feedback, have people hate what you do. But just get it out there. Let the customers tell you what they need. And yes, there's always these stories about Steve Jobs inventing, uh, telling you that uh, customers don't yet know what they want. But the financial reality is if you don't sell something, you're not going to be around the block yeah. uh, to see your business become a success. Yeah, most definitely. And then another uh, one of the top 15 young gigs is one Mr. Sitle Mabaleka. Um, we actually had him here on, on the show. So, so, so Sitle... Um, considers himself as a an ex, as an ex, experiment in the digital age, mm. um, a living proof of concept of what the internet can create. Born of a teacher and a tech, Sisley grew up learning with learning and writing around him. 
He had a curiosity uh, about him ahead of, of his time and always in trouble with his teacher of his schoolwork. He never did much of it. He was a smart kid that couldn't be tamed. Um, he wasn't that well. He just enjoyed playing uh, ball with, with the norms. Um, and um, Sitka is quite an interesting guy. He, he, he taught himself how to code. Um, f from a very early age, you, um, because of circumstances, you only went to go and study education. Yeah, yeah, to study to be a teacher. But he never lost the passion of of becoming um, one of the best things in the, in, in the tech space. And um, he started attending the, these hackathons um, to, to to further build his skills. And um, Right now, what is Sitle doing, Michel? Um, so there's so much one can say about Sitle. I mean, now uh, he's busy with uh, with MLab uh, as one of the, the, the one of the guys at MLab who helps the code tribe guys build and learn how to build apps. But the nice thing about Sitle that I like is 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 as you as you mentioned is he doesn't really have boundaries. So he comes from a teaching background. So this is a guy who. He says, I'm not going to be confined because I'm in learning about education and teaching. Uh, he taught himself about coding. And he codes and does a lot of stuff much better than those who actually went to study this stuff. Uh, so that's another thing that I really like about about Sitli. And he's very curious. Uh, likes learning a bit about the business side of things. Uh, likes, he's not scared of making mistakes as well. Uh, so he's very, very keen on just learning and making a whole bunch of mistakes. And you, you know, you... With Sitler's story, you actually highlight such an important point. And you know when you learn a language? Yeah. They say that the best people who learn the new language are the ones who don't mind being embarrassed to hang out with people who speak that language and to screw up and being ridiculed. Mm. Is that for you and your experience the same with coding? As in, don't wait at home until you think you're perfect. Go out there, ask, don't know what you're doing, just be in that environment. Does that work? Yeah, it, it, it does work. It, it does work. It, it has a, a, an element of, of intimidating. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit intimidating. But what I like about I like doing that because, I mean, I'm sitting with this guy. He's quite a brainy. And, you know, I, I pick a That's couple... That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I pick a couple of things from him. And I think you learn by being in that space with people that are doing something yeah. uh, better than you. You're learning a lot of that. And that's the best way of growing. Instead of sitting by that little con and think you know everything, uh, you never really grow. So I like the kind of mentality where you jump yourself, you throw yourself into the deep way. You are there. They laugh at you. It's fine. They, they, they make stuff, funny stuff about you. It's fine. But at the end of the day, you are learning. And, and that's the most important thing. Can I, can I just ask another question? Unless I'm derailing you. But, but, no problem. But the coding often seems a bit like when you talk about mathematics. Mm. For those of us who don't code but are passionate about the technology and the potential thereof, mm. when people talk about coding, is like when people talk about mathematics. Very intimidating from the side. Is it really that bad or is it just a let's just jump in the water? Well, the good news is it it has gotten a lot easier. Yeah, that, 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 that's the good news. But um, coding is it's not really an intimidating thing. So you just need to be logical. Logical is, 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 is at the top of everything. If, 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 you, if you go and learn all the different programming languages, the logic is the same. Um, the, the, there are if statements. Um, if this is the case, um, this must happen. Um, you need to iterate things uh, with events and, and, and so forth. So, so it, it, it's all about logic, um, but it has gotten much easier that um, anyone can can just get started and learn how to code. There are a lot of, um, of, of templates, there are a lot of frameworks, so you don't really have to now go and start from the, the, the bottom. You can start from, um, well, there's this book called Zero to One. Uh, I'm sure you have, you have, you have read it. Um, so so with, with, with in, in that case, um, you, you are going from um, one to infinity. Basically, yeah. in today's age, you are going from one to infinity because um, there is a stepping stone that is already created for you. You can use um, uh, uh, tools that are designed to, to help you code much better. Uh, uh, the thing is, people tend to think that when, when we talk about coding, you have to th uh, think about writing textual instructions and so forth. But coding is way beyond that. Yeah. Um, you can be using block diagrams <coughs> in, in coding. So, so uh, um, in electrical engineering, th th there's something called um, laid-up programming as well. You can actually program a lift uh, um, and simulate it with laid-up programming. So um, th there are tools that will help you use 
uh, block diagrams and, and, and stuff we call LADAS, hence LADAR programming. It's all about applying logic in, in, into things. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. And, so, and one, one of the things that we did with the um, Finnish embassy in, in May, um, we, we're teaching kids how to, to, to code um, and, create, and producing music. Simple instructions, kids could just write, um, uh, play a note of 60, and then that note of 60, 60 plays, and they, they could create some very nice music out of that. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Love your initiatives. Thank you. I think one of the things I've picked up from coding is that um, I don't code, uh, but one thing I've picked up, it's almost like any craft. Um, the more you work on the craft, uh, obviously the craft is not easy, uh, but the more you work on the craft, uh, the easier it becomes. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it completely becomes easy. It just becomes easier. To, it gets easier doing it. Uh, so that's one thing that I think um, th that makes coding stand out is that obviously the logic element, uh, there's that you basically telling a computer what to do. Uh, starting from scratch within, without anything. Yes, I'll just say, gentlemen, we're going to take an ad break, and then after that, we've got a very nice jam to play for you. Um, Ayanda Gia, uh, so, so her music is out. Go check it out on the stores. She's a brilliant um, graphic designer who also used her talent and um, make the other talent accelerate also. So we'll check you after this. Are you an innovator and solution provider? The Innovation Hub is looking for entrepreneurs in the ICT, advanced manufacturing, bioeconomy, and the green economy sectors. If you have an innovative prototype or startup business which addresses an existing market need and you're predominantly based in Gauteng, we invite you to apply for one of our incubation programs. For more information, visit theinnovationhub.com or call 012-844-0000. The Innovation Hub is a wholly owned subsidiary of the Gauteng Group and development agency. Have you ever thought about the power of social media? Social media has the power to make your business grow. Grow! Yeah. Why don't you let us manage your social media? Because our business is to see your business grow. Visit us at www.beastownmedia.co.za. All right, we back, we back, we back. Uh, T, take over. Um, welcome back to the show. Uh, you are still tuned into the Geeks Connect show with myself, Tiani, and Misho. We are joined by Mr. York Zuchi on, on the show. He, he brought some gifts. We're talking uh, um, about his journey in Africa. We're also um, celebrating some of the top 15 young geeks in, in the country. Um, so, so we're just going to quickly wrap up that list. Um, and one of the people that we are highlighting right now is one Mr. Pivrand Naik. Michel, how did you meet this guy? All right. So I met Piv. Um, we're part of the Microsoft Student Partner Program. Uh, and he's basically who was representing Durban um, as as an MSP representing stu uh, Durban. Uh, this guy has been doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff over the past years. Uh, Microsoft related technology. Uh, he's had an opportunity of traveling to Microsoft East, East Africa uh, to their conferences. Uh, he's also gone to the Microsoft headquarters in in uh, Seattle. Uh, so he's he's really into tech quite a lot. When the new technology comes in. Uh, he plays around with it and he tests it out. So just a little bit about his born and raised in Durban, a product of a local coal school, uh, studied electronics engineering, uh, computer systems, and he has always been fascinated by technology and science. He recalls taking over his parents' library. Okay, listen to this, guys. Uh, he recalls taking over his parents' library cards because he always wanted to borrow more books than he could on his junior card at the time. Piv considers himself to be lucky to be introduced to programming at school. At the time, it was new; it was a new subject just introduced. Since then, he's never stopped. Got into university and found himself spending more time at the IT department, entering their hackathons and attending their events. So once again, hackathons is one of the things that he plays around with, uh, plays around at quite a lot. And he's facilitated a couple of those uh, hackathons in Durban. So yeah, he's been involved in that. And most recently, he just created a chatbot. So there was a competition, uh, a Facebook competition, um, where it's an international competition uh, where, you know, you, you basically do a chatbot project 
uh, for Facebook Messenger. Uh, and I remember we put it up uh, from a geek culture point of view and no one really entered from a South Africa side uh, besides him. And he created this bot. I uh, just forgot a little bit how it goes, uh, but he showed me the bot and how it works. So um, th- th- this bot, we're, we're talking about um, artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, so, so, so basically eliminating the human aspect in, in giving real-time response. You know, you're talking machine learning and, and so forth. But mm. what they did is um, he, he created the chat box that ha- that helps you find the nearest police station. Uh, um, so, so, so it started with a story when he was uh, somewhere in in Deben, and um, he wanted to report a case very fast, and he could not find the right police station to 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 go to. So, so the, the, this chat box allows people to um, locate a, 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 a police station nearest to, to them and get the right type of help they need. Yeah, so that's Pierre from from Durban. A uh, very, very, very cool guy. Um, uh, he well, he he won the competition uh, from a local point of view, and uh, they will be doing some stuff with Facebook. There's a program within Facebook called Facebook Start or FB Start. Uh, it's almost like an incubation, sort of like support uh, for 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 people come up with ideas on the Facebook platform. So uh, he won't like it if I say this, but uh, he got at least a good forty thousand uh, dollars to work on his project. Wow! Uh, res- most of it will be going to resources. Uh, to make the project uh, go forward. All right. Um, so we, we, we are ch- chatting to Mr. York Zuki. Zuki is it Zuki or Zuki? Ah, it doesn't matter. Just York. <laughs> okay. The just chief York. coffee drinker. Exactly, yes. Um, exactly. Uh, all right. Th- and uh, just uh, letting all the listeners know that there's absolutely not a sight of a hint of a cup of coffee in this little studio. Just saying. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Anis for tea. How could you, man? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's only here. <laughs> Who drinks tea drinker? Uh, 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 I, I look, look at them all, all shy suddenly. I, I, I drink uh, tea, it's good. Uh, 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 okay, uh, it's forgiven because there's a degree of caffeine inside. Yeah, just an so element fine. of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But, but can, can you quickly tell us why are you referred to as the chief coffee drinker? I, so there is a fundamental reason that I'm a great believer that unbelievable relationships and conversations start out of sitting down with somebody over a nice cup of something. Mm. Obviously, I prefer coffee, but I'll maybe somewhere deep down in my heart, I'll find a space to love co- uh, tea drinkers. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But coffee is an enabler of conversations. And it's all very easy to send a presentation, to send an email, to send a tweet to somebody. But nothing beats sitting down. With and them. talking to them, putting your phone away, and actually looking in their eyes and listening to them. And coffee for me is an enabler, hence chief coffee drinker. All right. And um, you are, f- of course, from Switzerland. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, originally born in Switzerland, German mother, Italian father, French dog. So I can woof in French. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, your entrepreneurship journey is quite inspiring. Can you take us through the, the journey for the gigs out there? So I don't. I don't know about what what is really inspiring about it, other than to say that I have learned uh, in the same way that a child goes to the dentist and has his teeth ripped out, which makes him in the long run a healthier child. Uh, I have learned to enjoy the entrepreneurial journey. It's uh, it's been one where a lot of the things that I thought I knew were tested in the harshness of an economic environment. In other words, I failed a lot of businesses. I had um, to learn that failure isn't necessarily about you necessarily, but about your business idea, about the way you positioned it. So, you know, you grow up very quick in entrepreneurship because there's no job, there's no cushion, there's no salary at the end of the month. If it doesn't work, you learn quickly, nobody buys it, you shut down the business. And at the beginning, you take it very personally because the business is you. So the journey of entrepreneurship for me has been one of starting many businesses. Some of them became relatively successful, and then I screwed them up because I got comfortable in that space. It's been a fantastic emotional roller coaster that I wish on everybody, not to say that the journey is fun necessarily, but it is one hell of a journey. It's one of the most empowering things you can do to start your own business. All right. And can you quickly um, take us through what do you get up to these days? Um, What type of businesses are you involved in? So uh, very short. um, Do you guys know what Tinder is? Yes. Officially or not officially? Officially. Officially. You know what Tinder is? Not officially for me. Not officially for him. 
so you read about Tinder. <laughs> so we are the Tinder for businesses in Africa. So we are one of the biggest B2B platforms. And we are basically a tool, a platform, which helps SMEs all over the continent find each other to do business with each other. It's completely free for our entrepreneurs, and it's used by many different governments and organizations around the continent. So you don't see our name anywhere. It's called jointheequation.com, and it's our little call it initiative and passion to try and make a difference in the horrible interest trade stats in Africa. Join the equation.com. Hey, bingo. All right. Um, what do you think motivates you? Do you perhaps have any books that you would recommend to the listeners out there? Oh, she, uh, so there's a ton of books and I think uh, uh, sometimes it's books, sometimes it's blogs. It doesn't really matter what source your, your inspiration comes from. Uh, two books that are particularly stand out for me from a, from an entrepreneurial perspective for our, our younger listeners out there is I would say The Art of a Start by Guy Kawasaki. Now it's a bit American, so um, forgive the sort of uh, I know best approach, but it is a practical, down to earth, what do you do tomorrow morning way to start a business or to look at starting a business. So uh, forget about whether the macro micro trends are right or GDP is right. You know, that doesn't help somebody who's starting out of a garage. So Guy Kawasaki, The Art of a Start. And the second book that I would go for is uh, The Millionaire Next Door. Now it's less of a book, but it's actually um, a study by two Harvard guys, which, uh, which teaches you about who's really a millionaire, the guy or the girl who earns a million dollars, but spends a million dollars a year. Or the guy who earns 300000 but spends $200,000 a year. Mm. And there's a fundamental lesson for many entrepreneurs who are using entrepreneurship as a, as a vessel to get rich, as a vessel to reach a destination. Guys, entrepreneurship is not always glorious. It's hard work. Nobody rewards you for it. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy the destination. The Millionaire Next Door is a wonderful book about that journey. The Millionaire Next Door. Yeah. <laughs> What an interesting no, title. Not, 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 not the girl next door, but the millionaire next door. <laughs> <laughs> the millionaire next door. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Um, we've seen it a lot on, on social media. Um, how do you find leisure to, to take all these awesome um, pictures and posts about your journey in Africa? So I'm a sharer by nature, even knowledge. And so... Th- I want as many people to benefit from the privilege that I have of meeting unbelievable people like you too and spending time with you too and, uh, and traveling and seeing places. And, you know, last night at our house, we did uh, a lecture on the history of civilization in Africa. It is mind boggling what an incredible continent Africa is. And yet most people live in the little cocoon. So the more we share, the more we bring everybody onto the same page, the more the likelihood that uh, that the rising tide lifts all boats. So how do I find time? There's a balancing act. And this is a lesson I had to learn. But in entrepreneurship, your biggest um, obstacle to your success is being distracted. So you've got to know what is it it that you're doing that brings you further to what you're trying to achieve, even if sometimes the, the, the destination is not 100% clear. Mm. But distraction can destroy you. So it's all very good to have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all that, but are they adding value to you or are they distracting you? Mm. Um, so it's a balancing act. Um, I think from one side, one question I'd want to ask um, while we're talking about social media, mm. how has social media you know, helped you out? Uh, in terms of maybe promoting the business or pushing the business, but also as you as a brand, how has it helped you out? So for me, social media was more an accident rather than something I intentionally and strategically did. So Twitter, for example, I used to use Twitter to bookmark articles I found interesting Mm. so that I couldn't find them again. Oh, so use the favorite one while they're still the favorite option. Yeah, so, so it's favorite, but also retweet it so that I could find it easily and add a little comment. Yeah. So that I can resource those, uh, those, those, those sources of information. So, and then Instagram was just a way for friends in Europe to show them a little bit where I live and what's the life like here in South Africa and so forth. So none of them were really intentionally made for business. 
but they were more of a passion and for personal use. However, over time, they have evolved into a lovely funnel tool, mm. meaning the Twitter is like a big fishing net. People might be interested in what I post about business in Africa. Then they connect me on LinkedIn. LinkedIn hopefully is interesting enough for them to want to speak to me. And then from there, we go to a coffee conversation. And from the coffee conversation, we go to a practical, I mean, not always, obviously, but business uh, proposition. All right. Um, we're now going to take a quick ad break and we're back with Mr. York. Making a bold statement yet blending into the surrounding suburbs of Melville, 27 Boxes is a realization of edgy design and practical implementation. A radical departure from the shopping malls of our generation, yet not a return to the high streets of our youth. 27 Boxes showcases the best of a shopping center set in a garden surrounded by the bohemian suburb that is Melville. 27 Boxes Shop Play, eat. You're listening to brandlive.co.za. <laughs> yeah, our honorable son technician is out of order sometimes. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yes, uh, welcome back to the show. You're still tuned into Geeks Connect. We're broadcasting live in one of the boxes, 27 boxes. If you haven't been in this neighborhood, it is absolutely incredible. Yes, um, right here in the city of Jobek, the city of gold. Yeah. yeah, and the one city of, the of opportunities. Yes, yeah, city uh, opportunities and cities of coffees. There's a coffee shop just around the corner, a real Italian espresso. Yes, uh, of course. Uh, it's a hint. Uh, um, it's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> I picked it up. <laughs> of course, the lights are inspiring. Um, the life, the movements of the city are inspiring. But what keeps you moving, Mr. Yok? What motivates you, really? How long have you been in South Africa? All your life? Um, <laughs> no, um, I've been in South Africa for the past six years. Okay. Other than that, I was in the Republic of Limpopo. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for which you need a passport. Tell me something. How long have you been in a relationship? Um, I'm guessing because you said you're not allowed to be on Tinder. You didn't know about Tinder. <laughs> yeah, is he in a relationship or am I getting him in deep trouble? Okay, I'm getting in deep trouble. But the point here is that... <laughs> You know, guys, in any country, when you live in there, in any job that you do, even if your business, when you are with it all the time, 24-7 for a long time, you start taking it for granted. Believe me, as an outsider, when I tell you South Africa is one of the most incredible countries in the world, and I've lived in a lot of them, and I've traveled in a lot of them, and worked in a lot of them, the amount of tolerance, what, the amount of talent, the amount of passion and drive on the ground is bewildering. It may not always be matched by the right skill sets, but you'll see in five years' time what's happening now in politics. Let's just, just clean up. Five years from now, South Africa will demonstrate to the world what an amazing country it is. Awesome. That's what motivates me, to be here and tell the world what an incredible country it is. All right. Uh, Koketso is, is saying five minutes left. He's, he's quite a cool guy. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, so uh, how, how do people get hold of you? So Twitter is probably the easiest way if you want to follow any of the crap that I post. Uh, so it's YZP. So YZP. Twitter handle at YZP. And there you'll also find my contact details, link, LinkedIn, email, Instagram, everything. I mean, it's so bloody easy to find me. It's almost ridiculous. Uh, in fact, the other day, actually, one of the entrepreneurs walked from Soweto all the way to our office in Hyde Park. Seriously? He didn't have a cash to get a taxi. Yeah. He lives in a shack. And he heard about me on social media and wanted some opinion on his business nice. idea. His business idea was shit. However, he's the one for yesterday, last night, where we did African, the history of African civilization as told by an African. It was beyond bewildering. So that's what I'm telling you. There is talent everywhere, behind every corner. We just got to create an enabling environment for it to shine. Awesome. Um, do you have any last min message to share to... Guys, first two things. One, ideas don't count. It's your ability to implement it. So whether you have a fantastic tech idea or otherwise, show us the traction that it has in the market, even if it's one small customer. Secondly, enjoy the journey, enjoy the journey. The destination is going to constantly change. When you're going to reach your first 100,000 rand turnover, you'll aim for a million. When you reach 1 million, you'll aim for 10 million. If the destination is, your, is what drives you, you're going to be disappointed. Enjoy every single day of this incredible roller coaster called entrepreneurship. Awesome. 
Yeah, thank you so much for being on the show. We really enjoyed thank having you, you here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And um, for the coffee. No. Uh, you're welcome. You are very much welcome. <laughs> Misho, can you quickly tell us um, w- about what's happening next week? Um, Startup Grind or something like that? All right, so next week is Startup Grind, uh, uh, Startup Grind Pretoria uh, on the 4th of July um, in, in celebration of the... Uh, the o- theme is Africa. The, the, the theme is America-based, um, oh. Independence Day, I think. Uh, so yeah, guys, Startup Weekend next week. Uh, starts up grind, not Startup Weekend. Next week, Tuesday, uh, Hadfield uh, starts at 5. The tickets are free this time around, so everybody can come through. Uh, you can wear anything blue, white, or red just to go with a little bit of the theme. Okay. What's happening on your side? Okay, so um, th- the youth ICT and business training... Um, we're taking things to the Kalahari Desert this time. I'm so excited. 10 to 14 July, we're heading to the Kalahari Desert to uh, um, train young people how to build mobile apps, electronic systems as well. But the Blood Horn Supersonic Car, of course, is coming to South Africa. And it's going to be awesome, attempting to break a, a land speed record of 1,000 miles per hour. So, so that's exciting. But then the question is, how do we get young people um, to, to, to be innovative around that? How do we build STEM capacity? So that's yeah. what we'll be doing in the Kalahari Desert and also in Limpopo, in Libua Homo. Um, and then also Hack the World, the Hack the World um, Hackathon by AB in, in Bev is happening 29 July. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. Yeah, I, I saw already that they, they are like 29 teams. Mm. Jeez, that's going to to be exciting. So using data, using um, all sorts of technologies, how do you make beer great? How do you innovate around beer to make sure that people um, drink much better? They have access to to, to, to the different um, uh, services of beer in the world of beer. Yeah, but at the same time, how do you make them safe? So there's a whole yes. bunch of people going out drinking, mm. uh, but accidents happen. So one of the challenges is how do we then make them enjoy the experience of drinking? but also be safe uh, in terms of going home. So if you guys still have solutions around that, it's closing on the 14th of July. So on the 14th of July, um, if you haven't applied or registered, you won't be part of the hackathon. It's going to be a whole different type of hackathon. Okay. And um, the, the the Geek Culture Annual Hackathon, book the date, mark the date, 29 September. Just, just just on a bit of that, um, sorry to everybody who thinks, who thought that the hackathon is happening this weekend. We really apologize for that. Uh, that's that's my fault. I'll take the blame for that. Uh, it's not happening this weekend. It's happening on the 29th of September, as T mentioned. Uh, it was moved because of some here challenges, obstacles here and there. But it's going to be happening. It's going to be big. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, it's 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 been fun. Um, also, the information security training in Kimberley on the twenty second of July is also happening. Let's make security great again. Let's keep on keeping on and keeping on keeping on that keeping on so that we can can and could can and could could. Oh, could could. Mr. gentlemen, thank you so much for <laughs> joining us today. Um, yeah, I'm out, Misho. Uh, I'm definitely uh, switching off my data. Peace, guys. Cheers. Brandlive.co.za